determination, passion, stamina, and the will to win. The end result, the Rick Motek Sports Car Series. Extreme Motorsports brings you the Rick Motek Sports Car Series, brought to you by Rick Motek, high performance sim racing equipment, and in part by TD's Tree Service. Live Mondays, 8.30 p.m. Eastern. Hello everybody, welcome to Apex Racing TV for another season of the Extreme Motorsports Rick Matek Sports Car Series. Tonight, we head to the Sebring International Circuit in Florida in the United States. Hello everybody, my name is Andrew Woodhouse alongside Adam Bath and I Racing World Championship driver Alex Simpson. And uh, Alex, I've come to you first mate, just quickly, Sebring, it's one of the tracks that you've got a lot of experience of and uh, what makes this such a special place in the history of motor racing. Yeah, fantastic circuit. Hello, everyone. Good to be back. And um, yeah, looking forward to tonight's race meeting. Beautiful circuit this place is. It's just got such a great flow to it. Um, a lot of character as well. Uh, people moan about it being bumpy, but that's what makes Sebring what it is. And that's why they'll never sort that out. Because, uh, yeah, it's just, uh, it's just a challenge. And uh, once you start to know the circuit really, really well and uh, you get up to speed, not to rhythm, it's just the, the flow is just amazing. Adam Bath will be along in a minute, but we've first of all got a track guide to show you around this historic track. Of course, this track was originally built uh, back in the late 1940s, post-war. There was a uh, gentleman that was an aeronautical engineer here at Hendricks Army Airfield, and he decided he wanted to hold a sports car event here, something similar to the 24 Hours of Le Mans. He decided to hold the event on New Year's Eve in 1950. The first event was the Six Hours of Sebring. Two years later, the 12 Hours of Sebring was born. As we approach Sunset Bend here, this is the final turn on the course. We're going to come out of here and take you to the strike, and we'll get this lap underway for you. It's a very fast exit here. We'll talk more about that when we come around on the next lap. Coming down to the start-finish line, the front straight here at Sebring International Raceway pits are to your right. Going to come in here wide into turn one. This is a third gear corner in the Mustang. Going to roll that center. Look for that blind side of exit. Get right up through the gears here. And this takes us down into this little turn two kink to the right, and the third, and into second. This is a very complex section right here. Coming through, you hug those apexes, come in wide here, allow the car to roll, let the nose set down nice to get that good launch up off the exit. Coming around Big Bend here, this is turn six. Very fast corner, drivers love coming off this turn and down into this very, very difficult tight hairpin. Getting down through the gears into third, back down into second here. Tight, tight, tight rotation. You wanna get that car straight back out so you can get a good straight launch out into turn eight here and up into turn nine. Another fast section coming off that hairpin. You will see overtaking opportunities here. Coming down into turn 10, Cunningham corner, back down through the gears, another tight right, again, change in track surface, as we've got a combination of asphalt and concrete and old runway here that this track has been built on over the years and expanded to. Coming down into tower corner here, this is a turn 13, we want to get a good, nice launch off the exit there because this has taken us to the fast section, the complex of 14 through 16. Drivers will be wide open through here. Won't see a whole lot of overtaking opportunity, but you got to be quick. And you'll see why in a moment. Coming into 14, quick right, back to the left, pedal to the floor, lift, trail brake, off the brake, down into Holman straight. Want to get a good fast run off this corner because this is where you can get 
get a little bit of draft help and hopefully slipstream the driver in front of you. Heading down to the final corner here, which is turn 17, known as Sunset Bend. As you can see, that sun is glaring late afternoon here right through our windshield. Coming down into the corner, into third gear, wide apex entry. This is a closing radius corner. Let it wrap around, get a good straight launch off, take this thing right to the outside up through gears. Get a good straight speed launch to the start finish line. There you go, there's your track guide lap from Sebring, Florida, Sebring International Raceway. Welcome back to Sebring, coming down the back straight, almost going into Sunset Bend and the pace car is ready to pull off into the pit lane, start this race, one hour around this historic circuit, and Mike Dam is on pole position, head of Kevin Ford, At any moment now, the Ritma Tech Sports Car Series, brand new season, the green flag flies and we're away at Sebring. Nice clean getaway. We can see uh, Pasquale Iannucci having a look up the inside into the first corner. That might be tricky. Three wide they are this time. Avoid the wall on the inside if you can. That is with uh, Scott Kennedy and I think it was Stephen Thomas there with three wide with. And um, first time tonight, Adam Bath, welcome. The Mazdas are about to take the start. Here come the Masters through the final corner now, Rob Hartley on the pole, and we're going to get the green now, and away they go down the front straight, two by two in uh, most of the field, you can see there up the middle uh, is the blue car, Travis Schwenke trying to get in the mix, and now they all file single file into the, into the first corner, Rob Hartley uh, making no mistakes so far. But as we've seen in the past few seasons of the Ripper's Sports Car Series, it's going to be very difficult for any of these drivers to make a breakaway. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, Masters especially. Mustangs have got that luxury, Alex, of... Um, well, it's a luxury if you're in the front of not really giving up too much slipstream. So, um, yeah, it would be a bit more of a challenge for uh, the Master drivers to get away. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I think, um, as we've seen the last few seasons that we've been covering this, the uh, Masters are going to stay very, very close together throughout this race. And that field just seems to be getting tighter and tighter and competition stronger and stronger. So... Um, not that the, uh, the Mustangs are, are much different, to be honest, so it's good to see a few um, sort of faces. Oh, oh, who was that? It was very out of shape in the background. I think that, that was... Pasquale Inucci, uh, yeah. Yeah, it was Inucci, so just about collects it up as I get attacked by a fly. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that same one, is it, that was there last week? We? No. <laughs> no there, it's been, been hanging out all that time. Yes, yes. Yes, um, <laughs> Kevin Ford then into the lead. He's and, uh, flying. Really been, a, but yeah, it's really been a uh, an amazing improvement for Kevin Ford this season in terms of last season he just wasn't really at the races for most of it. Great start to the season, second place in the opening race meeting at Daytona, which we unfortunately weren't able to uh, to broadcast last week because we were still um, still living it up in the Nurburgring. But yeah, uh, second behind Scott Kennedy and leading the way at the moment as they come around to complete the opening lap of the race. Quite a long lap here around. Uh, oh, it's a, one of the cars running very wide in the background, as you would have seen in the track guide. Uh, pretty long laps, and over the line we go 2.28 by Kevin Ford as he leads Thomas and Dam as we start lap two. Dam having a little look into the first corner, but not quite managing to um, gain enough of an opening to attack Stephen Thomas. Then uh, comes Dam. behind them is... Sorry guys, oh, yeah, side oh, by sorry, side as well inside, for the yeah. um, MX-5s around sunset. Oh, someone's out of shape! That is uh, John Allen, big time! Oh, and he's got... We saved it, but he's lost some He didn't hit anything, but yeah, massive momentum lost in this in this, uh, in this this car. Looked like it was an issue for him originally when he uh, got back on the circuit. Looked like he might have suspension damage. I think he's got away with it. We'll find out when we turn to the left-hander here. Turn one. Oh, contact in front of them as well. Oh dear, and now he's and involved in another, another crash. And there's another contact between Alan and Chris Torman. All started really with um, all started with Dan Carido and Giuseppe Inucci banging panels, and then um, yeah, ended up in a crash for uh, Torment. A bit of uh, carnage unfolding then in the Mazda MX-5s in the yearly going uh, in the 
uh, Mustangs, though, is Kevin Ford that continues to lead. However, Mike Dam, you can see, has already got past Stephen Thomas and has already got a bit of an advantage over the, uh, the green and black car and is now so solely focusing his attention on Kevin Ford. I think that was Leon Wright going off in the background as well. Um, pushing hard Leon Wright through tower. This is a nice section, Adam. At the end of the lap, it's quite, it's quite flowing and uh, fairly forgiving as well. Nice big runoff areas. Yeah, drivers making the most of the runoff areas as well uh, through that uh, Le Mans complex. And uh, Mike Dan might have used it to the best of his advantage. Uh, maybe a bit of the Alex Simpson line going through that uh, penultimate corner. But now down the back straight where he reached speeds of uh, just over 210 kilometers an hour, hard on the brakes and into. Uh, Sunset Benz to complete the second lap of the race. One hour race here at uh, Sebring and uh, Kevin Ford and Mike Dam are starting to stretch their legs over the rest as Stephen Thomas is now having to uh, soak up immense pressure from our Daytona winner Scott Kennedy. As uh, yes. we've got um, inf information from the stewards, incidents involving cars 60 and 22 is uh, under investigation. Uh, that is between Chris Torman and uh, car 22 John Allen. No surprises there, I think. Uh, no, I think they'll be having a long look at that with the stewards. Um, Alex, talking about Sunset, Ben, what is the best line through there? Because I'll be damned if I know. Um, yep, I'll be damned if I know, to be honest. <laughs> I don't even think Mike Dam knows where he is. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, to be fair, there is so many different lines you can take through there. Um, obviously, you go the tight line, then um, you have to accept the fact that it's a fair, fair amount bumpier and it's a bit harder to get on the gas initially it's perhaps a little bit quicker um, you take somewhere in the middle it's a little bit smoother so uh, you can carry on a little bit more momentum and pick up the gas a bit earlier and carry the speed out of the corner and uh, down the main straight uh, and then of course you can go really really deep into the corner and uh, yeah you do find one big bump there but again you take a lot of speed so there's, uh, there's a lot of different lines you can take and uh, yeah if you want to risk uh, something a bit different from the norm, you know, you can get overtakes done there. And it is so bumpy, isn't it? And I think it's like the odd racing surface as well here at Sebring um, just contribute to the fact that you just don't seem to have any grip or any sort of feel for that last corner. And uh, it's fairly wide on the exit, Adam, but we have seen people stack it into the wall on the uh, left hand side. Yeah, sometimes the understeer can catch you out on the exit of the final corner, and then you can find yourself just heading towards that wall. You try and do as best as you can but sometimes uh, you do get caught out similar to the final corner at uh, Road Atlanta sometimes you can find yourself in that uh, outside wall and uh, we've seen some of the drivers come close so far in uh, the opening few laps they'll be hoping that uh, they don't face a uh, trip to the wall in the rest of the races they go down the front the back straight again the, uh, the Mustang leaders uh, the Mustangs uh, the Mustang drivers are trying to push for a new car in iRacing this uh, car coming close to its uh, 10th anniversary of being in the sim and I'm sure the, the drivers will be hoping for uh, a new Mustang in the not too distant future on the iRacing service. Needs to be put out to pasture, doesn't it? Probably this car. Um, it is a it is a decent car for for racing, but uh, yeah, it's not that pleasant to drive. No action taken, by the way, involving uh, between John Allen and Chris Torman. So the stewards have decided, uh, Alex, that that was a racing incident. Yeah, it was a funny one, wasn't it, going into turn one. You've got to be given the room on the inside. Um, was he? Uh, was his nose just a little bit up the inside? Maybe. So, yeah. Uh, probably a good call, I think. Let's the race just flow as well. Yeah, Information think, um, in our ears from the race from the race stewards, yeah, that no action has been taken against uh, Tormund and Allen. That's going to be an interesting concept for us guys to deal with, isn't it, for a little while? When uh, you're in yep. mid-conversation, you get a little pssst. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm sure we'll get used to that. If you wonder but, why we stop and stutter, you know why. By being in the gallery back at uh, university, that... Um, yeah, uh, Mus uh, Mustang continues... Uh, good Production battle Mustang. gallery, I imagine, and not the art gallery. Uh, yeah, yeah. You don't want to see my art skills. Um, they're, they're terrible. <laughs> As a Scott Kennedy... Uh, is hoping that this race is a work of art. That was well, pretty poor link. Uh, as um, he's battling away with um, Travis Davis. Good to see TD back in the series. Is a uh, company part of the sponsorship of the Roma Tech Sports Car Series. Trying to have a little look into Tower Bend. This is uh, uh, a duel for fifth and sixth. Up in sixth place, Travis Davis. And uh, oh, letting it all hang out there. That's a very sideways looking for Mustang. 
Um, the funny thing about this car island is it seems like a bit of a boat. It seems a bit docile at times, but uh, the rear can step out. It's got quite a lot of torque. Yeah, I think the the big thing in the car is the minute you've got a bit of understeer and you try and sink the shoe to get it to turn, it it, it turns on a dime then. <laughs> it yeah. really catches you out. So um, that's the thing, you know, you've got you to drive the car so that you just don't carry that understeer into the corner so you can exit, you know, get on that power nice and early and the exit just doesn't over-rotate on you. So, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a tricky car. I think it um, really rewards those that don't overdrive it. So, yeah, it's, yeah. it's something you have to oh. learn. You know, it's a bit of a knack to drive, a bit like the Kia and things like that. Yep. You know, it's, yep. you don't necessarily have to be the super fast guy. Yeah, and to be quick it, if you um, if you can um, sort of learn to ma master it. Travis Davis on the attack, the first corner up the inside. Have to get it moved on there though. Car on the outside carries a lot more speed. Might oh. be able to if you can stay alongside. You might have a go into turn two, and no, he doesn't make it. Uh, but Travis Davis definitely looking fast and uh, looking faster, Adam, than uh, race one winner Scott Kennedy. Yeah, 228, uh, 222.8, and that's that for Scott Kennedy. 222.5 uh, for Travis Davis. California versus Indiana, a few uh, hundred, maybe even thousand miles between uh, these two. That's not stopping Davis at all. He's having a little look to the inside. He's looking like he's enjoying things at the moment here in the early stages of the race. Also, we have got the mandatory pit stop to go and look at that oversteering. Uh, the power slides on the exit of the hairpin, one of the slowest corners on the circuit. Uh, what Alex was describing earlier, the understeer and oversteer the next. Sounds like a racing game that you and me have been um, tackling the last few days. Oh, don't you give me nightmares and flashbacks. Uh, Robert Hartley is leading Travis Frank nearly by half a second. Um, it seems like the crashes, Alex, have just lit the pack up a fair bit, haven't they, in the middle? Because that's kind of that area where John Allen and Cole were. Yeah, the front two really are flying. And um, it, it's fair to say that Hartley and Swinky, they're probably the fastest two guys in this uh, car in there as well, Allen's in there as well but obviously got a bit of damage and I think the pack really lo lost the draft and that's why it spread apart somewhat and um, Tom Rathjee leads the uh, leads the second pack if you would have it and uh, just not able to quite lap, he's running Ooh. sort of 229s and they're running 228 so pulling away you know considerably. Burrito versus Allen into the hairpin at the back of the circuit and um, John Allen going through Little surprise there, really. Alan, one of the front runners in the series. And Corrido is he's getting closer and closer to that top five every every single week, but struggling to be a regular fixture. Um, Corrido. Uh, uh, Adam, five places gained for him. Uh, yeah, good stop by uh, the, uh, the Iannucci in the Mazda MX-5 class. I think he might even be the biggest mover in the entire field. Indeed he is. Yeah, up eight positions to fifth. I was just going to say that Dan Carrido, uh, even though he's not fighting in the front, he does have the uh, the open category to fight for in the in the Mazda MX-5. So he currently sits second in that championship behind uh, Jordi Fike. Of course, very early stages of the season. We've only had one race meeting so far, but uh, looking in the right direction, Jordi Fike is uh, not too far ahead of him. Uh, of Dan Corrido, so uh, if you can keep him in sight after the after the pit stops that we'll have in uh, the not too distant future, then uh, there could be a good battle brewing between those guys because they'll be fighting for the for the Open Championship this season in the Masters. Yeah, good to see Jordi Fike up in the top five as well in fourth position and closing in actually on Tom Rathji, who, who finished last season very strongly as well. Um, one notable uh, thing that we've got is uh, Alex Jeff Jacobs has moved from the Mustang into the Mazda. Yeah, it's just um, yeah, a bit of an interesting switch because I think Jeff was another one that was moving forward, wasn't he? Slowly with the uh, with the Mustang, had some really good races towards the back of the uh, of uh, season eight. So yeah, bit um, but new challenge for him, obviously. Uh, fancy to make it a little bit different. We'll see how he gets on this season. The minute he's in 26th place, ahead of um, Edgar Sancinelli. So, uh, oh no, crash! On there. It's Travis Davis. Now, how did this happen? Well, Davis had got past it. Oh, like he'd got a bit past of Kennedy. Rejoin for Travis there as well, right onto the racing line. Everyone scrambles to avoid him. Oh no! Well, let's see what happened. Then he was able to get it past Davis. Good at all, was 
Now Davis was able to get past um, Kennedy, but then Kennedy, oh, four panel in a Mustang. Interesting to see what the stewards well. thought about that. I and mean, yeah, the rejoin did. The aftermath was Leon White and uh, Wright, sorry, and Michael Ruddock getting the worst of it, I think. Well, Leon Wright would have seen a whole load of white uh, in that and that white Mustang that Travis Davis is uh, racing today. But um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what the stewards thought. So, that, Alex, have you got a replay of, of the initial crash? Yeah, yeah, we just brought it up. We saw exactly what happened there. You're right. I'm sure that's going to be uh, going to be looked at. I mean, I think. The uh, initial one will just go down as a racing incident side by side there, just uh, a bit unfortunate. But uh, yeah, they might look at the uh, the rejoin. Fortunately, not too much damage done. And you can see Travis frantically trying to get out of the way. Um, but uh, yeah, he may still get looked at for an unsafe rejoin. Just in front of Travis Davis, he's got a battle between Brandon Whitworth and Michael Ruddock over 8th and ninth place going into the first corner. Interesting to see what uh, Davis can do to try and get this position oh. back. In fact, he's going to try and take one already. Ruddock going wide. Davis hard on the brakes up the inside. Had a look at the second driver as well, didn't he? And then Whitworth had his wits about him and uh, managed to avoid the contact. There's no information. In our ear roll as well, Andrew. Yep. But there is, um, yeah, the invest they are investigating that now in race control. So we'll see what uh, comes out of that. Yeah, 54 and 33, Travis Davis and uh, I think 33 of Scott Kennedy, but, uh, and yeah, so that, that's, that'd be right. That's the, course. that's the initial contact, yeah. yeah. Sorry, uh, I thought they were invest I thought they would uh, more likely investigate the rejoin than the, uh, <laughs> the crash. <laughs> Kennedy has now got another opponent to uh, duke it out with. This time it's uh, Russell Ruddock, California versus Texas, West Coast versus uh, South Coast battle going on here. And this is over uh, fifth and fifth and sixth place. Field in the mount in the Mustang starting to uh, spread out a little bit in some nice uh, individual battle packs. Yeah, and um, gives us a chance to look at the lead battle in the MX fives between Rob Hartley and Travis Fenke, 19th and 20th places respectively. And uh, Alex, we always see these guys at the front. It goes without saying, but uh, well. They need to start the season off strongly, don't they, to march towards the championship? Yeah, they do, and let's just, as we didn't talk about the points at the start of one, we just have a little look. So, you know, it was a good race for uh, Alan and um, Iannucci in the first race, and but Travis still there in third place. So Hartley um, didn't score any points at all, though, so he needs an absolute belter, doesn't he, today? <laughs> so, yeah. This um, just get back into it, doesn't he, really? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, very early going, though, obviously just one round... Uh, out of the way, but if you have two bad rounds, Adam, it can start uh, start playing catch up a little bit too much. Yeah, it's not the longest championship in the world, this Ritmatex Sports Car Series. It's probably just the length of a normal uh, i racing season. So if you miss two races, that's only ten weeks left for you really to get in with a shout at getting back in in the championship. Plus, of course, we most will certainly have a week off for uh, the Thanksgiving celebrations that are going on in America towards the end of November. So. Uh, there are not going to be too many race meetings left for you to mount a championship challenge because um, Alan and Ianucci, if they're able to get some more points on the board here at, at Sebring, uh, then that gap between him, uh, between Rob Hartley and the rest of the field could be uh, just that little bit bigger. I'm in third as well, coming under a lot of pressure actually from Giuseppe Ianucci, who's um, won many races in this series over the years. Uh, he pulls out the slipstream, he's going to have the inside for Sunset Bend. I think this is going to be fairly easy for Ianucci. I think the time, the gap is just building up and up and up at this point. And I think um, Giuseppe's decided enough is enough. He needs to go to the front um, here and see if he can um, uh, at least maintain the gap because it's now nine seconds to the front too. So I need to come into the pits fairly soon as well, you would imagine. Um, although. Having said that, I think the strat the best strategy is that to brim the tank as full as you can and, and make a make a short splash of fuel. We've seen some drivers. Oh, off oh, goes uh, that Alan. Uh, yes, was Alan. Yeah. Was well, uh, we've just been told that incident involving uh, cars 54, 33, Travis Davis and Scott Kennedy. No further action between uh, between those two after their contact going into Tower Bend. The equivalent of the referee keeping his cards in his pocket in the. Uh, 
but it is uh, competitive action now. It's not a pre-season friendly, as we've seen out on the track today, but no penalties been dished out. Um, yeah, I think it, I think it's a good thing ultimately, but some will definitely be warranted at some points during the season, I'm sure. But, um, Kevin Ford taking a nice line to the final corner. Going to get this lead back from Mike Dam. He's less than a tenth of a second apart going over the line, Adam. Yep, yeah, Alex, go on. Oh, I was going to say, we must have missed the, the change of position, or did... did <laughs> I don't recall showing it. Yeah, must have done, yeah. so. I think it happened a, a few laps ago. It was quite a while back, I think. But uh, yeah, these two have been uh, battling ever since. Uh, 2.22.6 for uh, for Dam on that last lap. 2.22.8 for Kevin Falls. Lap time starting to drop off a little bit now that the the tyres are starting to get a bit worn around this uh, ancient Sebring surface. Uh, just to show you the comparison of it, uh, Mike Dam's fastest lap of the race, 2.21.3, now doing 2.22.6. So 1.3 seconds off the pace that he was setting earlier on. Pit stops aren't too far away either. We've only got, we've got 40 minutes to go here. So in about five minutes or so, we'll start to see the first drivers coming in. Yeah, I think you're right. And um, Alex, was it you that was telling me maybe a couple of years ago now that they were thinking about uh, resurfacing this circuit and got met with a hail of protests, was it? Um, I don't remember the conversation, I have to say, but it <laughs> wouldn't surprise me um, one, one bit. Um, I just think, you know, as soon as you do that, that's the the character of the circuit gone. I remember driving this um, this circuit at the base performance simulator in Banbury. And um, that's the one that Darren Turner and, and his um, GT1 at the time um, had. And they had an Aston Martin sort of cut in half and was a simulator there. And they let us drive around Seabree. They turned the bumps off on the circuit. They did a bump free. They had a bump free version of it in the simulator. Okay. Yeah. It was rubbish. It really was. Really? What does yeah, that entail like, then? Why does it was just all the character was gone? You know, it's just. Like, Why would they have a bump? For, what what benefit would it give I them think, to take the bumps uh, away? We did ask that question. I think it was they they sort of come back and said, "Well, it's more just so you learn the layout." And I was like, "Well, no, you've what's got the to point learn the of learning the layout the when bumps. you've got to compromise lines for bumps and things like that?" I was like, "You know, you can't take that line no. around Sunset and nail it." So. And they were like, yeah, fair point, fair point. But, you know, they just looked at us as, like, sim racers, like we didn't know what we were talking about. And then when we... Uh, Did when you we tell actually, them to turn the bombs back on? Yeah, when we turned some pace, you know. It was like when they tried to trick... Because we did the GP2 car, they tried to trick me by putting me on spa in the wet. Yeah, expecting me to crash. And there I was just winging it around there in the wet. <laughs> and I turned around and I was like, you should just put me in the rain. You know? <laughs> but I didn't crash at all. Well, they were quite surprised. <laughs> I'll tell you what, the, the drivers will be crying GP2 track surface here at um, <laughs> uh, Sebring. I was just looking up uh, some of the facts about the circuit at the front straight. Uh, I think it's still the same surface as when it was being used as a World War II airfield. So uh, that shows you how old the, the, the surface is around the Sebring circuit. Because uh, even on the old layout of Silverstone, the, the old World War II. Uh, Runways were just used as service roads. It's actually part of the actual course, but that would explain definitely why the. Uh, explain a few things. Of course, down this hairpin at the bottom end of the circuit where Mike Dam and Kevin Ford are, that's the scene of the, uh, the famous video that went viral of the of a car with absolutely no brakes having to take to the uh, to the road by the circuit, Alex, smashing through the gate and everything. Oh yeah, God, I remember that one. And having to um, go through the toll booth to get back in. <laughs> oh, Kevin, Mike Dam really pushing now as he uh, uses all of the track in his pursuits to try and get some sort of advantage over uh, Kevin Ford. The gap remains at uh, four tenths of a second here as they go through uh, Tower Bend, closing up on uh, what looks like John Allen in front of them. Uh, just looking to see if we've had any pit stops yet. We've had, had, we have had John Allen come in in the, uh, the Mazdas, plus we've had Jeff Jacobs in as well. So the Mazdas getting some of their pit stops done pretty early here. Giuseppe Iannucci. Biggest mover in the field. He's just coming into the pit lane as well now. I wonder if he's doing it to try to get some clear air. Like you say, he's up, uh, well, he was up by seven places from where he started in 28th place. He was up to 21st and just got past Tom Rathje. But, um, yeah, I mean, what do you think clear air is a good strategy at this point, Alex? Or would you rather be um, in with the other cars trying to get some slipstream? Right, I think he's already gone to the front because he knows he can run quicker than the guys are running. So, yeah, makes sense. Jump in now, get some clear air. Um, 
don't allow the pack to come with him if he can pull away and uh, yeah then he's got uh, maybe a bit of a, a bit of a lonely race for uh, third isn't he well, Alex, before we, uh, we get, get the, main, the majority of the pit stops underway, do we need to take our, our first of our commercial breaks? Yep, let's uh, head on down there. We'll go side by side for uh, this one and um, just to keep some action uh, going while we uh, head on there. Oh, no! John Allen! Oh. John Allen, he's, he's gone. He's in the wall. Sorry, Alex. Yeah, that's fine. We won't go. <laughs> we'll leave it. Let's, do the little, let's, let's bring the replay up. We'll do that. And then after that, we'll head to the, head to the break. I see exactly um, what happened. I probably jumped a bit too far back here. We're on one. Weird one that, because uh, I was expecting to see him go into the dust. Oh, look, look at that, lighting it up, tank slapper, then a bit of dust and dirt, and off he goes. Somehow doesn't get too much damage from there. He manages to just put the rear of the car up against the Amco barrier. Yeah, I've just on. seen it now. Oh, he just got a massive drift, didn't he, halfway through the corner. Desperate to try and save it, snapping here, there, and everywhere. You're right, he had, he's got away with that one a treat, hasn't he? That could have been pretty severe in the end. Yeah, not too bad. Right, let's head to the commercial break. We'll be back in just a minute or two. to all the sponsors for helping make this broadcast possible and in FX Racing TV the Extreme Motorsports Ritten Tech Sports Car Series head over to RittenTech.com for uh, some great sim racing products and uh, well some great sim racing going on the circuit at the moment and it's Mike Dam former champion of the series ahead of Kevin Ford and uh, one of the series admins Adam and Kevin Ford really putting him under a lot of pressure he was leading the race of course earlier yeah, had the lead momentarily at the start. Mike Dam was the driver that started on the pole. Uh, car 93 did a, uh, a 220.5 in the qualifying session that we had earlier on. Uh, interestingly, this season we're going for the closed qualifying uh, to give the drivers the best possible chance of getting the quickest laps. And uh, yeah, Mike Dam was the one that got a car on the pole. Kevin Ford uh, started second on the grid. So it's the two drivers that started on the front row fighting for the win here. And I wonder what's going to take place when we get to the pit stops. Who is going to put, uh, who's going to get the best run into the pit lane? Who's going to be able to get hit their marks? And who's going to put the least amount of fuel in to get them to the end, but without having to run the risk of uh, running out of fuel at the end of the race? So plenty of, plenty of strategy options and plenty of racing still to go as uh, we're quickly approaching the halfway mark of the race. Obviously, Alex, we didn't really cover qualifying to um, such a great degree, but... What difference does the close qualifying make in terms of the uh, the mindset of the drivers? Yeah, well, I mean, obviously everybody's doing it all together at once. Um, it's a little bit harder to see what other people are doing time-wise, and there's no opportunity for draft or anything like that during qualifying. So it's just your own raw pace out there, really, that's uh, that's doing it. So yeah, there's, uh, there's there's minor differences. I mean. I mean, for the most part, it's worth pointing out that, of course, we started the race half an hour earlier today. And um, we need to give a big shout out to all the drivers and the series for doing that because 
that's really due to us and um, that's yep. why they brought in this, this the, the loan qualifying because it was quicker to do loan qualifying more than it was to do like the you know the separate 10 minute sessions with the break with the sort of like the short break in between so um yeah we appreciate that and it allows us to uh, to cover it and not <laughs> not hit the bed at like four o'clock in the morning when they finish so yeah it's uh, it's very much appreciated Mountain to stand up at the moment. I don't know if I'll be able to do that if we were broadcasting at um, four in the morning. I'll probably fall asleep standing up. As uh, we've had a few cars come into the pits, we've had Pasquale Iannucci and we've had uh, Travis Davis, who uh, has been in the wars a little bit today. We've got Michael Ruddock, Michael Burgett, uh, Brandon Whitworth, Sam Cork, and uh, Michael Monaghan all coming into the pits uh, to get the Mustang pit stops underway. It's seeming like 22 to 23 seconds is your uh, pit stop time then um, Adam for this one the quickest one so far we've got is Brandon Whitworth managed to do it in 20.2 and uh, he's right on the tail of uh, Travis Davis now lowest pit stop was a uh, Leon Wright with a uh, 23.7 second pit stop time might serve him well towards the end of the race if any driver starts starts to struggle with the fuel line but that's all he just overshot his pit box by a little bit when he came into the pit lane Two cars out of the race uh, have just taken place now. Uh, Edgar Sanchinelli uh, looks like he's had a few connection issues, so he's had to retire from, from the session. He may come back later on, and uh, Warren Wilcock has uh, exited the exited the sim, so uh, looks like he's not going to be getting any points. Uh, the uh, the West the Western driver. Yeah, it looks like we've uh, just lost our uh, co-commentator for a second. Hopefully, he'll be back. And it's just a random internet issue. Uh, yeah, I don't think we've bored him to death yet. Um, as, as we go into the final corner, Rob Hartley's come into the pits uh, as the leaders in the Mustangs come through the final corner. Looks like they're going to split the two Mazdas. That was cool to see there. Really close there. And, um, yeah, you can't separate these two. Having fallen into the lead again. And, well, no evenly matched, Adam, I think... Uh, it's going to be hard push to pick a winner even at this point in the race. just only realised that that was Kevin Ford regaining the lead there from, from Mike down through the final corner. So yeah, that was a very good move splitting, splitting the Mazdas. And yeah, I'm sure these guys are going to be uh, inseparable even after the pit stops. Uh, Stephen Thomas has just come in as well. Uh, he joins the other drivers coming into the pits. Matthew Katila as well in the Mustangs. That just leaves uh, one, two, three, four, five, six cars. They get to come into the pits. Uh, Fours, Dam. Kennedy, Ruddock, and uh, Jennifer McDonald, and the Canadian Scott Brooks as well. And just as I say that, McDonald and Brooks come in as well. So it's just the top four that are yet to make their pit stop. We've only got three cars left to make a pit stop as well in the in the Mazda. Schwenke, Rafje, and Fike all uh, staying out for the long run here. Would we be able to get another look at that pass for the lead, Alex? Oh, we brought it back up on replay already. Don't worry, yeah. just as uh, Adam was talking fantastic. about it, we uh, we brought it. Yeah, fan like you say, fantastic move. Um, Dan obviously trying to go around the outside, which is probably the right thing to do, but I think um, uh, Kevin saw that the uh, the Mazda was going to run just to the middle of the circuit like normal, and uh, there was an opportunity there to uh, sneak up the inside, and he timed it perfectly. Uh, apologies, everybody as well. I was having a bit of an issue with my audio, and I think that's why I didn't, why I didn't see that move. So, um, but I did have a look at it back, and yeah, fantastic stuff. Ricardo Zonta will be having flashbacks. Uh, <laughs> I think somewhere. Oh, that was no, we get it off. That was a great move. Yeah. Obviously, Sunset Ben's probably not as oh, like, iconic as the com as, as Dam nearly runs into the back of, of Kevin Ford. There, no, he nearly he went off the circuit. Ah, okay. Well, he's lost, he's lost the momentum, outside. hasn't he? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Good little battle for 12th and 13th right now, guys, as well, side by side through the hairpin. Chad Osborne, Osborne and um, uh, Sam Cork. I was going to say, um, as well, I think my sound cut off, so I don't think you got me, but I, I did want to echo what Alex was saying about the, uh, about the series admins and um, giving us the oh. chance to cover the series again. What's happened? Oh, the leaders are in. That's what's happened. No, no, no. What's oh. happened is Chad Osborne's gone straight on. Um, oh, he's had a and, massive one. And, yeah, and just crashed. I don't really understand what the heck has gone on there. One minute he was fine, the next minute he's just... Yeah. 
ploughing straight on. Basically, Done a little look on a replay a just to see issue, see sure. what happened. It well, must he attempted be. to slow down, but then he tem attempted the, like, the car was braking, but then he sped up again. So, yeah, and he's exited the session as well. So maybe he's had enough for the day. <laughs> Weird, very strange. Got to be a hardware problem. Top four are in. Mike Dam, Kevin Ford, Scott Kennedy, Michael Ruddock. Uh, sorry, Russell Ruddock. And it looks like it's going to be Mike Dam that's going to win the race off of Pit Road, as they say. And uh, yeah, Mike Dam back into the lead after well, losing it momentarily. 22.4 uh, second right. stop it was uh, yeah against the 24.3 so two seconds that's where he got got it so pit stop nailed but Stephen Thomas and um, Ian well certainly Thomas is a lot lot closer than he was that was the 20.8 second stop so he's back in that fight guys yeah, not far off at all Stephen Thomas um, he's got some clear air in front of him that's got uh, yeah he's not no, he's very very close really he's only a second behind now so. Thomas looking good, and also um, Iannucci, and that is uh, Scott Kennedy uh, caught up quite dramatically as well. And it's traffic, oh man! And uh, Stephen Thomas had to get out of it massively there to uh, avoid absolutely smacking the back of one of the. Uh, in fact, he, he he was trying to get the jump. He lit up the rear wheels, Alex, and uh, had a bit of a half spin there. I thought he was trying to avoid the Mazda, but he just lost it. Yeah, I'm just having a little look at that on replay. We were just focused on the battle. A few cars further back. See exactly uh, what he did. Like I say, there was a bit of traffic on the uh, hairpin. And, uh, yeah, just trying to get the best exit he can out of there, can't he? He did well to realise very, very quickly that he just overcooked it a little bit and corrected it. I mean, he probably lost a, a second, maybe two there at most. But actually, not, not too bad. Now that the uh, now that the Mazda MX-5s have completed their pit stops, we can run you through the order there, and it's uh, mm. spread apart quite a bit. Have, uh, have they? I think you find uh, Rathji and Vikas are, are still out. Ah uh, yes. I apologise. I haven't, I haven't looked that far over on the column. I tell you what, though, the Mustangs have completed their stops, so we can run you through the order there. Uh, Mike Dam leads the way. Then second Kevin Ford, third Scott Kennedy. Uh, sorry, third is uh, Stephen Thomas. Then fourth Pasquale Iannucci. Fifth Scott Kennedy. Sixth Michael Burgett. 7th Russell Ruddock, 8th Travis Davis, 9th Brandon Whitworth and 10th uh, is Leon Wright after the pit stops have taken place in the in the Mustang class. Yeah, it's been a pretty solid race for the Mustangs but um, I'm a little surprised Alex that the, the field has split apart so much, really 90 seconds covers the field, they just 16 laps. Yeah, it is a little surprising I have to say. Um, I mean obviously we know there's different sort of levels of um, ability out there hence the the two different sort of classes within the class you know so with the with the um open and the pro but uh i haven't really seen any major incidents or anything like that that would have put you know the likes of um brooks and mcdonald that far back so uh, yes yeah, it's, it's a tough circuit and that's really what i'm putting it down to actually is you know just people perhaps struggling a little bit to get right up to pace like we've seen before yeah, maybe a couple of people had damage as well because it was getting pretty close in the first couple of laps. Uh, getting fairly close between Michael Baguette, Russell Ruddock and Travis Davis, 7th uh, sixth, seventh, and 8th places. And uh, yeah, Baguette who started ninth. I don't think he's made his way through into 6th and now at the head of this pack, but he looks like he's um, really holding these guys up a tiny bit. Yeah, three positions gained for Michael Baguette and this one in New York are doing pretty well here. And then, uh, yeah, Russell Ruddock in 7th place from Texas and uh, Travis Davis, the man from Indiana, in 8th. Uh, All fighting over uh, the, the very positions here as they go into the uh, Torrent and Twisty section on their way into Tower, uh, the 90 degree right. You can see the tyres still sliding about, even though they've just changed tyres in uh, pit stop. Uh, Tom Ruff J. Alex is finally in in uh, the Mazdas. Geordie Fike looks like he might be staying up for uh, just one more lap. Yeah, He's staying out. This is... Sorry. Yeah, no, yeah, just like you say, one more really, I think. That's got to be on the brink of um, all the fuel and everything else like that. So, he's done that a few times, hasn't he, in the uh, past? Stayed out really, really late, so. Going to help him. Going to give him less fuel to put in, less stationary pit stop time. 
and um, yeah, I'll definitely gain something on the cars in front. Remember, Jordi Fight was up in fourth place, Alex, so um, he might gain a substantial amount here. Yeah, quite possibly, and I think Iannucci, let's see where he's going to come out, because um, yeah, he's back in front of um, Rathji, so um, quite comfortably as well, after the pit stop. He was the, obviously the first person to pit, and there's about a four and a half second gap between those two now, so um, good call for Giuseppe to come in. He's managed to, um, to you know, sort of get the undercut and pull away, isn't he, really, more than anything, so... I'm not sure if he's closed in on the likes of Hartley. He's still showing 16 odd seconds behind um, Rob, so I think uh, that sort of gap is sort of maintained. Although the last few laps, again, he's still losing a second lap. The uh, Hartley and Svenke are absolutely flying out there. Whilst the battle for six continues to rage in the uh, the Mustangs, we can have a quick rundown of the championship standings in uh, that category as we go into the second race meeting of the season. Scott Kennedy, no surprises, leads the way after his win in Daytona. Uh, Kevin Ford second, Mike Dan third, Griffith fourth, Ruddock fifth, and uh, they're at the top ten rounded up by Ianucci, Thomas, Wright, Whitworth, and uh, John Ellers. In the open category for the Mustangs, it's uh, Chad Osborne leading the way with uh, Sam Cork in second. Scott Brooks in third, Jennifer McDonald fourth, Robert Briss fifth, and then uh, Will Cock, who uh, retired from this race earlier on, uh, Mike Ruddock, Mike Monaghan, and then Corey Watson and uh, Richard Reagan Jr. Those two cars at the back both on, on zero points after the opening race meeting at Daytona. Yeah, it's a shame we missed Daytona, but we're having a fantastic time in the uh, Sim Racing Expo in, in Germany and travelling back from there. Uh, we, were, we were saying, and as Mike Dam goes very wide at the uh, penultimate corner, we were saying, Alex, uh, that we, when we got in the car to drive to the airport on the way back, that was pretty much the time that this race would have been starting. I, I was just about to say the same thing. Uh, while that's going on, look at this battle. Sorry, oh, no, that's battle for fifth, six, six still and seven. Yeah. yeah, it's getting crazy out there. It's really, really oh, good. Traffic. They've got a lot of traffic as well uh, ahead. But yeah, it was funny, wasn't it? As the alarm clock went off and we were just setting out towards the uh, the airport, it was like, well, we could do the Rick right now. It was like that was the regular alarm call for the Rick Matek's podcast yeah. series. So. <laughs> crazy. No differences really for us. Um, it prepared as well for. Uh, but this week, and look at, oh. oh dear me, Russell Ruddock having a look, showing the nose at the inside of the Sunset Bend. Uh, very, very close, both the inside wall and to uh, Michael Burgett. That was a no long day. <laughs> As a, no triple on. cheeseburgers for us at this time in the morning, though, this time. Do with that. Do with that. No, there was a, Kevin's, Kevin's there was a chicken somehow. burger for me before the race. Oh, oh. okay. Oh, okay. Not triple cheeseburger though, unfortunately. As um, oh look at that, Travis Davies taking a lot of momentum as well through uh, through turn one. Kevin Bit of an eye racing donuts, ritual, but, um, isn't it, to um, offer out like pizzas and things like that? We are push, we are put our dress up and uh, you know, like anyone wants uh, to deliver us a pizza before the race is all good. That's <laughs> it. It's like it could be like our version of a Patreon. It should that's be called um, Fatrian. Yeah. As um, <laughs> as we as get fed. <laughs> Yeah. Well, Sam, right. or, or, different or tiers Ford. equal different foods. Yeah. Kevin Ford did try to send us donuts. It looks like the people at Royal Mail may have eaten them for us. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah. James Leggett. That's it again. Oh, there's contact somewhere, guys. I'm hearing it. I'm not, not seeing oh, where it. Where is it, though? Yeah, I'm not sure. Didn't end well last time. You couldn't pick on. You could see. Because he contact and couldn't see it. Try going through the field. I could see it. But, um. Is it? Oh, no. What was it? Sound like contact then? Not right. Not it definitely like sounded a, like contact. Not a blown motor or anything. Like that. No, no. Oh well. Maybe we'll hear that from who it was. Possibly from race control. I bookmark the the time, and uh, if they come back to us and let us know what it might have been, we can uh, we can hopefully go back and um, and find that. The Mazdas, by the way, a tiny bit quicker through the twisty stuff than the Ford Mustangs on this circuit, but uh, the Mustangs having their advantage as as usual on the long straights it's crazy how uh, travis and uh, robber literally at it again you know after the pit stops 18.9 second stop for travis rob was at 22.3 
but yet they found each other on the track with uh, what 16 minutes to go we were saying uh, last night in the Club 73 Touring Car Championship that these races always seem to come back together towards the end of the race and uh, almost no matter what Adam and uh, again we're seeing that with Frankie and Hartley Mike Dam and Kevin Ford are glued to each other could be a um, really exciting finish Pretty good lap by Kevin on that last lap, actually. Yeah, 2.22.3 for Dam, 2.22.1 uh, for him. Just continuing to watch this Travis Davis battle with Berger and Ruddock going into turn one. And how do they not crash into each other? That was uh, some pretty good driving there by all three of them. Uh, it's now resulted in uh, uh, Michael Berger going from the lead of this group to being uh, the last car in this three-car train. It's pretty unlucky for uh, Berger and... Uh and for Russell Ruddock, it's a little bit of a break from staring at the back of Burgett's car, and that will take us nicely into our very own break. And we go split screen once again in our adverts in the Ripmatex Sports Car Series. Battle for uh, sixth place rages on here in the Ripper Tech Sports Car Series here at Sebring International Raceway in Florida. Uh, Andrew Woodhouse, Adam Bath, and Alex Simpson joining you uh, for the for round two of the Ripper Tech Sports Car Series. Russell Ruddock, Travis Davis, Michael Burgett, they've been the main entertainment for the last few laps, going at it hammer and tongs and uh, swapping positions. And Adam, that was fun to watch over that last lap and a half. Really enjoyable, and it still is now. We've got just under oh. a quarter of an hour to go. Is uh, they run wise on the exit of the of the Le Mans complex, and this is going to be Travis Davis's opportunity. They're coming up on some lap traffic as well. That's uh, car zero nine, Jordy Fike, and John Allen just in front. Yeah, and they're going to have to pick the moments carefully oh. here. Pitching the lead as well. On the inside, oh, wide for uh, Russell Ruddock. Davis, oh, getting squeezed between the number ninety five car and the wall. Ruddock makes it round the outside, he's got a little bit of help, is he, from Jordy Fike? Not really, but oh, this, is, this might be an issue into turn one. Don Allen. Um, John Allen wisely stays as wide as he can. Oh, look at them all. I think this hit each, hit each other slightly, Adam, through, the, through turn one. Very close. It's also very close to the battle for the lead as well. I don't want to draw your attention away from that, but we've got a similar situation. We've got uh, we've got two Mustangs trying to get past two Mazdas here. Kevin Ford has taken the lead away from Mike Dam now. They're trying to get past these two Mazdas. There's just no way to go as they uh, go through turn eight and nine. Uh, the Fangio complex, as it says on my on my track map. Manuel Fangio, for those who don't know, five-time Formula One world champion, from Argentina, and uh, yeah. Fantastic driver and seemed to be one of the best. Uh, funny, Alex, we heard so much about Fangio. Unfortunately, none of us uh, got to see him race, but yeah, what a, what a, another fantastic name in Formula One. Yeah, ex absolutely. I mean, there's some classics, isn't there? Some uh, some major names in there, and he's one of the one of the standout ones. But yeah, before an era before we uh, we started to uh, watch it and uh, Adam's dad's DVD collection as well. <laughs> there you yeah, go. Uh, uh, sorry, everybody, I don't know many stats about uh, that period. But, um... <laughs> yeah, rubbish, get out. <laughs> what do we pay you for? <laughs> uh, well, do we really don't have any 1950 stats for us? <laughs> oh, I don't know. Never the records mind. may have mysteriously blown away. Uh, going into the... <laughs> Sunset Bend, it's, oh, this, this battle's blowing us away at the moment as they go for the final corner. Kevin Ford versus Mike Dam. I think Fangio might have been around for when Sebring did host a Formula 1 event uh, back in the 50s. Um, I believe it may have done. Uh, well, I'll have a quick look into that. Well, if you cover the battle for the lead, I'll look into that. Go for turn one then. Ford versus Dam. 
And this is where Ford was able to get the lead earlier on uh, just a few laps ago. Now he holds the advantage with 11 minutes to go in this one. And uh, Mike Dam, who's been on the pole position here, um, practice he was quickest as well. We desperate to get that lead back, and you can see it, Alex, as he uh, lights the tyres up and dances all about on the exit of that left hander. Yeah, if anyone was under any illusion that Dam is not pushing out there, well, you can think again. He's absolutely giving it apps, just everything there. <laughs> Nearly lost the car. Um, so he's putting everything on the line, and this just goes to show the improvement over the winter. Um, I know it's not really the winter, but you know what I mean. Uh, of, of Kevin Ford, really just, you know, turning up. Thank you very much. Sometimes it just clicks, doesn't it? You know, you can be racing a car for a little while, you can be quick and stuff like that. And the air's always been quick. But then all of a sudden, you know, every last little piece just clicks together and you find that those extra two or three tenths of a second per lap. And, yeah, you can have a race like uh, like this. Let's hope uh, it stays the same for the rest of the season. It'd be great to see these guys battling like this for the whole race. All season long, I'm sure they'll. Uh, I'm sure they'll not want it to be like that. The sort of stress levels must be pretty enormous right now. I think Travis Davis might just have had the slide of the race award uh, going through the hairpin. That might be worth uh, looking back on the replay. Let's see if we can get that back. Um, yeah, so had to slide it one way, then the other, then again. Uh, he was able to hold on to the position as well. He's currently still oh. in sixth place. <laughs> have it. That's what I call, uh, you know, giving it some. So. Look very, very good. Well, he's now having to get past one of the Mazdas. Mr. Woodhouse, do, saving, saving F1 race. 19.59 also the United States Grand Prix. Um, however, poor attendance and high cost relocated the next US Grand Prix to Riverside International Raceway in Southern California, wherever the heck that is. Well, that was that's ironic because uh, Riverside well, I know shut where Southern down California in... is, but I don't know where. Yeah. I've never. Uh, I'm not sure about Riverside. Riverside's now shut down and uh, Sebring's still going strong. Um, obviously, and speaking of yeah. going strong, I what? was going to make a point. So my microphone is playing hell with me today. Um, I was going to make a point. I think Kevin Ford has been quite high up in this championship before. But I wonder if maybe, um, Alex, it's possible that he might have been concentrating a lot on the admin side and maybe it's not so much on his driving. But yeah, maybe, th maybe that focus has come back a little bit this season. Yeah, Might be something possibly. to ask him if we get him later. Yeah, we'll do. Yeah, we'll do just that. I think so. I know from our point of view, obviously, three seasons is the first time we've seen him up there. So I'm happy to to call the improvement. Yeah, I, I just want to pick up on the point about you saying obviously the high costs. It just goes to show, you know, F1 charging lots of money, even back <laughs> in the day. It's not, to, not a new uh, thing to host a Grand Prix. So yeah. they don't change, do they? Nope. Right then, Ford versus Dam again. Uh, 222, 311, a fantastic lap by uh, Dam on that last lap to go slightly quicker than uh, Kevin Ford. As we saw earlier, he's giving it everything to try and get this lead back in. Uh, this is a battle that's going to be going all the way to the very end. Top 10 then, with eight minutes to go, Ford leading Dam. It is a Great Plains Club versus the Can Canada Club here for the winners. Look at Kevin Ford, he too's lighting the tyres up on the exit of Tower Bend. Stephen Thomas in third. You can just see the green and black car entering the shots as they go through Tower Bend. And then Pasquale Inucci in fourth. Scott Kennedy fifth. PD Travis Davis in sixth place. Uh, who looks like he's been enjoying himself here today. And then Russell Ruddock seventh, eighth. Michael Burgett. And then Brandon Whitworth in ninth. One of the biggest movers in the in the Mustang category. And then Leon Wright running at the top ten. Yeah, it's still tasty as well for the, um, for the MX-5 class as well. So, yeah. STs are um, giving us a bit of a show. Uh, just trying to see where Rathji, Fike, and Co are in the uh, sort of the open class. They're a little bit spread apart. It's really all about the um, about the ST Pro battle out there right now. Yeah, Schwenke and Hartley only a few tenths of a second apart, two tenths. So, as we've seen in uh, many a uh, Ritvisek Sports Car Series race, Alex, with just six minutes to go, we've got battles for the lead in both classes. Yeah, it's, it's nothing unusual, is it, really? You know, <laughs> literally, I mean, just look at that. Look at this battle, and then we can just flip to this. It's like, where do you look? You know, when you've got these two fighting at it, everybody's going to be moaning that we didn't show show the other cars equal enough. I mean, admittedly, the Mustangs have had a little bit more airtime, so let's, uh, let's go and focus a little bit more on the MX-5s. 
Well, Travis Schlenke had a very good race. Seven positions gained. Of course, there's some of those down to retirements in the uh, the Mustang and the and the Mazda class, but still a good job. Rob Hartley in second place. Uh, no stranger to the Mazda MX-5s. He's raced in other series on Sunday nights in the BSR leagues and uh, has raced. Uh, it's been a regular in this series as well. So, a uh, very good driver in the in the uh, the Mazda MX-5. Man from Carolina racing against Schwenke from Ohio. And uh, these two doing a fantastic job. They are uh, 21 seconds ahead of Giuseppe Iannucci, who's all the way back down in third place. And uh, they're now continuing their battle for the lead. What we need now is uh, just these guys to get caught up or get caught by the, by the Mustangs. And then we can have the two battles on screen at the same time. But yeah, with five and a half minutes to go, Schwenke versus Hartley. And it uh, looks just as close as the battle we've got for the lead in the Mustangs. Yeah, unfortunately that's not going to happen. They passed them probably five or six laps ago, didn't they? So um, it won't come around again in time, I'm afraid. Yeah, just but I'm sure. Up. I'm sure we'll get a few more of those again, like we did last season. That was always pretty epic, coming up to the uh, final lap of the race, and the two lead battles are uh, on screen at the same time. Just seeing the lap times, yeah, it's only about a six-second difference between uh, between the Mustangs and the and the Mazdas. So. Yeah, you're right. They definitely won't be getting anywhere near them in the final five minutes. Speaking of lap times, uh, we we're not going to be able to get many more laps in. We've got five minutes to go, and it's about a two and a half minute lap nearly in the in the Mustangs. So uh, not too long to go here as uh, Kevin Ford and Mike Dam continue to push on down the back straight. And Mike Dam might be trying to uh, save up anything for a late race charge. Let's go for the final corner. Different lines being taken there. We don't really know what the uh, the the perfect line is around uh, that final corner because it is just so wide and onto the front straight we go Kevin Ford crosses the line under the flag stand and over the uh, the checkered flag uh, under the checkered um, stripes I should say on the uh, start line does a 2.22.6 2.22.9 for Mike Dam so uh, three tenths of a second difference between those guys and looks like Kevin Ford just starting to maybe stretch his legs a little bit now Alex the gap up to six tenths of a second yeah he's um that was a good. That was a good final corner, really, wasn't he? Just pulled a little bit away there, so um, potentially just um, unfortunately coming onto the chat, just saying he had uh, internet issues, drop connection, the woes that is um, sim racing. I'm afraid um, don't really suffer any sort of random uh, malfunctions, do we, with the uh, with the engine? But uh, <laughs> yeah, we can have hardware, our own hardware problems, unfortunately, and uh, yeah. Um, a retirement that he, he didn't want on that one but yeah I think um, Dam if he's gonna do it we're on penultimate that lap really by the time they get around there's only gonna be one more to go so I think he's um, he's really got to start to pile the pressure on now into the back section on their way into uh, Tower Bend and you can see the gap just starting to get a little bit bigger again it's just hovering around the five tenths of a second to, uh, to six tenths of a second mark uh, Mike Dam just making sure that it doesn't get any bigger than that, uh, which is what he needs to do. As Kevin Ford again has a little bit of a tech slap on the exit of of, uh, of a Tower Bend, has to get a bit of opposite lock there, and that allows Kev uh, Mike Dam to close the gap down to three tenths of a second again. So uh, this gap just yo-yoing backwards and forwards in so the closing stages. A little bit of a lock up there by one of the two drivers, might have been uh, Mike Dam. Just couldn't see there between those two, but uh, yep. Yeah coming up on some lap traffic as well I don't know whether that will have any play in proceedings it's Chris Torman with a very severely damaged uh, Mazda that's in front of these guys they should be able to uh, dispose of them pretty quickly as as Alex we will be going on to the final lap as we go through the final corner yeah indeed and um, oh slightly compromised line I think that time for board he just was in a bit tight but still managed to get the uh, the exit right which is all important I think for for him, like you said, this is definitely going to be the final lap. We've got a little bit of traffic ahead. Partly very, very close to uh, Travis as well. They're coming down the back straight now as well. 1.2 seconds, maybe a move. We're having a look. Hartley lines up side by side into sunset for the final, well, not the final time, but the penultimate time. And, um, yeah, straight through. Travis just leaves a little bit of um, room trying to get the, uh, the high-speed exit. Um... But yeah, this is going to come down to the absolute wire, but Hartley thinks it's go time. Well, Rob Hartley's pit stop was 22.2 seconds, Schwenke 18.8. I hope that Schwenke's got all the fuel he needs in the car to get the get the, uh, the Mazda MX-5 to the end. Meanwhile, here comes Ford 
in the Ford. And Mike Dam as well into the hairpin. The gap's right back down to nothing again on this final lap of the race. And running wide goes Kevin Ford. Dam trying everything. Whoa, ho, ho, ho. That, matches, um, that matches Travis Davis's slide, Alex. Yeah, fantastic. <laughs> like I say, these guys absolutely pushing. It was a little wide, wasn't it, for um, Ford? And I think that's what Dam saw. He saw an opportunity, so just lit the tyres up and being a little bit eager just to um, lay the, um, the power down there and uh, didn't quite happen, but it's so, so close. Hartley half a second ahead of uh, Travis as well and pulling away, so I do think it was a bit of go time. All of a sudden, that switches back, though, as well. Let's just see what's going on. Oh, there's traffic in and around them. That's why. So, um, yeah, Travis got an opportunity now maybe to uh, come back. Oh, the traffic yeah, steams through. <laughs> Oh, this is not what they want on the final lap of the race, is it? Well, who they got behind him? That's Michael Burgett. And in the time twisty stuff, the Mazda is just a match for the Mustang. So it's going to be very interesting to see what's going on there. Meanwhile, the leader's going through the penultimate corner onto the back straight. We're not too far away from the end, the, the Ormond straight as we head out of turn 16. And look at uh, Mike Dam. He's going for the leaders here down the straight. He might have just picked, ducked out the slipstream a bit too soon here. The clock is at 10 seconds to go. We are going to reach zero any moment now. It's going to be go time for Mike Dam, I think. He might be trying to set him up through the final corner here. Kevin Ford just putting the car on the inside line. He can't get you past uh, that way, Kevin. But he runs wide on the exit. I think it should just be enough. Kevin Ford oh. in the grass. Very close indeed. And it's going to be Kevin Ford in the Ford that wins round two of the Metamatech Sports Car Series. Yeah, fantastic race. And let's have a look at the, um, at the ST class. See what's going on there. Svenke, 0.4 of a second behind. They've got traffic coming by. That should be clear and gone. Um, he's not really closing too much down this back straight, is uh, Travis. So it's looking good for Hartley, I have to say. Just doesn't don't get this uh, line wrong. It's got this Mustang there. Oh, a little bit out of shape coming off that corner. Where's Travis? We'll go on board with him, but he's far too far back. And the race is going to land um, for Hartley there. Fantastic move. Just a lap ago to get himself into the lead and then uh, held on to it from there. Stephen Thomas completing the podium for the uh, for the Mustangs. We're waiting yet for Giuseppe Inucci to come around the final corner now, and he will complete the podium for the uh, for the Mazdas. Mr. Woodhouse, is is he is he around? No, I think he's still having microphone issues, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, Inucci completes the podium. We'll hopefully hear him for that for our interviews after the race. But uh, yeah, here comes everyone else. Tom Raftray for fourth place. John Allen, despite the two major spins that he's had, or two major bits of contact he's had, he's able to get a top five finish. Uh, Jordy Fike, who uh, led the uh, the open category in the ST class going into this one, it finishes in sixth place. Uh, Battle Dan between Carido. Jacobs and uh, Corrido as well, going across the line. Uh, yeah, and that's going to be uh, Jacobs in seventh, Corrido in uh, eighth place. And that is, could be interesting in terms of the open category. Mr. Woodhouse, I believe, is back. His microphone's still muted, though. It's still muted. Uh, he's oh, unmuted yeah, sorry now. About that. <laughs> 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 I, I just got, we got the message says back, but I realised he probably just didn't remember that he'd muted himself. Yeah, I do apologise for that. Not feeling too, uh, not feeling too great tonight. But, um, but yeah, uh, fantastic race, really. And um, can't get much closer than uh, what we've had can you really tonight absolutely fantastic well uh, I'll let you get your breath back uh, and we're running through the finishing order from uh, the second race Kevin Ford wins uh, first win of the season for him Mike Dam the pole sitter finishing in second place in the end pushing him all the way the Canadian uh, Stephen Thomas in third Pasquale Inucci fourth fifth for Scott Kennedy sixth for Travis Davis seventh for Russell Ruddock eighth for Michael Burgett ninth Branson Whitworth and tenth Leon Wright 11th for Michael Ruddock, 12th Matthew Cotilla, 13th Scott Brooks, 14th Jennifer McDonald, and 15th for Michael Monaghan. Then into the Mustangs where it is victory for Rob Hartley, 2nd for Travis Fenke, 3rd biggest mover in the field, Giuseppe Iannucci for Car Triple Five. Then 4th for Tom Raffje, 5th for John Allen, 6th Geordie Fike, 7th Jeff Jacobs, 8th for Dan Corrido, 9th Chris Torman, and 10th Zach Van Horn. And then we've got the cars that had issues during the race. Sam Cork finishing nine laps down. We've got uh, Chad Osborne 
12 laps down, Warren Wilcock had issues, 15 laps down along with Edgar Sanchinelli, who had connection issues. John Ellers, 15 laps down, uh, 23 laps down, I should say. And uh, Tyler Shiflett and Ryan Cobb uh, failed to take the start. <clears throat> Excuse me, yeah, right. thanks for that, Adam. Uh, sorry, Alex. Oh, yeah, I was just going to say, let's just quickly, while we're waiting for a few drivers to come in to have a little chat, let's head to a quick uh, quick break and give a shout-out to uh, the Rickmatech guys. Of course, Frank sponsored the series, does a great job in it. And it'd be, uh, yeah, it'd be nice to just give him a little bit of airtime while we uh, get ready for the uh, post-race show. Welcome back to the post race show here at the Ritma Tech Sports Car Series, presented by Extreme Motorsports here at Sebring International Raceway in Florida. Andrew Woodhouse here, along with Adam Bath and Alex Simpson, and a very special guest in the commentary box, our race winner, Kevin Ford, joins us now. Kevin, mate, you've been in this series for quite some time. Um, how good does it feel to uh, once again be at the front of the field? Well, it, uh, I don't think there are any words that can describe the emotion I'm feeling right now. It has been a long time since we've sat in this uh, uh, this uh, pull or uh, uh, see, I can't even talk here in winter circles. So it's uh, it's been a long time coming. Uh, I can't even tell you the last time that uh, that we got us a win here in the Rick Motech series. So it was uh, a lot of work tonight, but we got it done. There's only one question I really want to ask, and that is focus through that move on Mike for the win inside uh, uh, sorry, inside and outside the back marker. You took the advantage up the inside and um, you made it work. Tell us what you were thinking going into that corner. Well, I, I knew once Mike got back around me that it was going to take some sort of a opportunity to come about. Uh, we were running such a close pace, and when you're running that tight, it takes just the slightest error on either driver. And uh, I saw that Mazda up ahead, and I thought, well... If nothing else, maybe this will time out and I can try and split them on the exit. And as we got closer, I realized that we were going to catch him coming right out of Sunset Bend. So I went ahead and made my typical line that I was running that was pretty quick using that bottom on the uh, the out there. And uh, I was able to get enough speed. The moment I saw Mike going wide, I knew he was going to have to lift quite a bit. There are a lot of marbles out there. The track didn't have quite as much grip. So uh, I chose the inside and, and it worked. So it was uh, a brave move. <laughs> I had to back steer a few times there coming off the corner to get around him. But uh, I knew that was the only chance I'd have to get it done. I believe it was um, second place for you last week as well. So, yes, the season has started off well. Start, yeah. Um, I mean, ever since we've been covering the series, I think this is our third season covering the series, and uh, you haven't had such a good start as this. So, what, what do you put that down to? Because we were wondering whether maybe in the last couple of seasons you you might have been focusing 
more on the admin side of things than maybe the driving or is it is it a conscious effort or is it just all coming together for you at the right time well, I, I, I think you're right uh, in the fact that there were some admin distractions. Uh, we were going through a real growth period with the series, and uh, my concentration just wasn't there. Uh, also was having quite a bit of uh, equipment issues. We had several failures with the car, with the equipment, uh, the system, uh, computer going down uh, the last two seasons. So there was just a lot of distractions in place. And, and of course, ensuing from that was less practice time, a lot of distraction. So this season and I, uh, I decided that I was going to somehow buckle down and uh, grab it by the reins, uh, invested in a new wheel, uh, upgraded the system, got all the equipment, put a new engine in the car, you know, all the good stuff. So, yeah, it, it has, it's been a, co a collaborative effort of all those things and been getting a lot more track time in lately. So if there's any drivers out there that uh, think that track time doesn't help, I can tell you that that seat time is absolutely critical. Hey. He's the first guy. I always say. I, I knew he'd come in. He always has a go oh, at me. Always goes. He always goes. What do you don't practice enough? I, and I would say yes, I don't. And, uh, you, you just don't even argue with him anymore, do you? No, not anymore. I used to do, but yeah, I don't anymore. Um, Kev, if you can, uh, just give us a uh, give us a shout out to the sponsors, uh, to the team, to friends and family, whoever you want to thank. Absolutely. Uh, first off, I want to thank uh, Frank Rico from Rick Motech uh, for putting up uh, uh, the sponsor, title sponsorship to the series. We can't thank him enough for being behind this group. Uh, I want to thank all the drivers for being involved and, and putting on such a great show for all of our fans out there. And obviously, uh, TD, Travis Davis at TD's Tree Service, want to thank him for his sponsorship as well. Big thanks to you guys for the great coverage you provide for us each week. And uh, it's appreciated all the way down to the last viewer that we've spoken to that watches and uh so uh, big hats off to you guys and obviously want to send a very special thanks out to my wife she supports me to the nth degree with my racing and and uh she's she's quite the teammate i'll tell you so big thanks to them and of course my folks my mom and dad uh big thanks to them so thank you guys excellent uh fantastic stuff and uh yeah adam who do you want to pick on next i think we've got uh let's have a look we got here. We got um. Got the race winner here. We got Rob Hartley. Huh. Yeah, Rob Hartley, our our Mazda MX-5 winner who uh, joins us in the the commentary box now. Rob Hartley, well done on the on the Mazda MX-5 win today. Hey, thanks. It was hard fought. Well, Travis had some speed there at the end. Yeah, decided to to go for the move into the into the final corner with one lap to go. Was he holding you up at all, or did he just decide that now was the time to make the move? Yeah, he had a pretty good pace, and I was just waiting for the right time. He uh, had a good run on him coming down the straightaway into the last corner. I thought I'd better go now, or I might not get a chance with them Mustangs coming. All the pit stops, um, how was the race going for you? Did you settled in pretty well after the start? Yeah, before the uh, stop, Travis was gaining on me toward the end of that run. I could tell my tires were going off a good bit, so after the stop, I kind of just waited on his tires to go a little bit so I could make a run at him. And it ended up working pretty good. There on the last lap, the Mustangs got in between us and created a little gap there, and I used their draft to my advantage, too. And I think Travis Thanks. was actually skipping out of fuel there coming out of the last corner, but it was a good race. Not surprised. Uh, Travis Schwenke's pit stop was. Uh, was pretty short. Uh, next week, uh, then we head to Circuit Gilles Villeneuve in Canada. Uh, how much experience in the in the Mazda MX-5 around that circuit at all? Yeah, I've done a good bit of official races there. Raced a few other leagues there, so it should be another good one for me. What's the Mazda like over those um, big curbs in the, in the final chicane? That's not too bad. That's the good thing about the Mazda, they handle curves pretty good. Right, well, uh, before we let you go, uh, do you want to send a quick shout-out to anybody at all? i just like to give a shout-out to everybody involved in the league. It's a good, clean league. Enjoy racing here. Looking forward to the rest of the season. Right, well, well, uh, well done on the win in the Mazda MX-5s today. It was enjoyable to watch, and uh, yeah, thanks for taking the time to come and speak to us, Rob Hartley. Thank you. Well, partly then a really good start to um, 
his season as well after getting a well a good recovery as we mentioned Alex you said he had to win that race and um, win it he did yeah well yeah exactly that he needed to didn't he after the first round so um, smashed it really today planned that perfectly got the pit stop right worked the tyres you know sounded quite comfortable actually in there he just looked like he was just sort of using uh, using Travis ahead um, saving the tyres using the draft and things like that and then you know, got enough awareness to think, mm, I'm probably not going to get an opportunity to do this on the final lap with the yeah. traffic coming. So went for it that one lap earlier than uh, than perhaps he'd planned. Work out, though, uh, definitely for them. Uh, Alex, have we got time for any more, or are we done? Yeah, yeah, let's let's see if we can't speak to um, to Travis and uh, Mike, the, the two runners-up as well. Sorry, Stephen, we are running a bit shy on, on time. Uh, I know you've been patient, but we'll try and catch up with you uh, next time. Um, let's grab a uh, let's grab up Mike. Hey, yeah. Sorry, Mike. Mid conversation. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Mike Dab joins us in the commentary box as well. Um, Mike, you were pretty much glued to Kevin for the entire race, and uh, thought uh, there were a couple of points there where you took the lead back, and it looked like you might have a good chance, and then. Uh, he pulled off a really excellent piece of driving in the in Sunset Bend to take the win. Yeah, no, Kevin, uh, Kevin and me were just stuck together there. I mean, yeah, he was so fast here, um, but uh, every time you get the lead, uh, you just—it's so hard to to not mess up on this track. You got to make every single breaking point count and turn in apex. So you're basically just on defense the whole time, and, and then the guy behind is just looking for a way to attack, and that's crazy. It's a good track. We were discussing that at the, uh, at the head of the broadcast. That uh, you know, it's, it's got good overtaking opportunities. It's got a good mixture of corners. Uh, it's got that bumpy track surface. It's very difficult. Um, yeah, you've got to concentrate for the for the full hour here. Uh, definitely, he took pole position, and. Um, couldn't maintain that early on, but was, was there a point where you thought that you were going to be in a bit of bother, or did you did you always have it fairly under control in terms of uh, top two finish at least? Uh, I think it was uh, from the start, first couple of laps. I think it was uh, clear as it, it was going to be me and Kevin, um, but I had no idea what the result was going to be. Uh, it's just it was so hard. Sometimes I, like, I never made a gap when I was in the lead, and sometimes I felt like I was almost going to lose Kevin, but it was just so close. Our pace was so close together; it was so hard to tell what was going to happen. Obviously, you're not going to be um, super happy about uh, second place, but I think you're still going to be um, fairly content with your race. I mean, it's about as close as you can get to winning the race. Really, zero point one two seconds. Um, you can't get a lot closer than that. So, um, do you go huh? away from tonight with um, a fairly good, fairly good vibe from it? Yeah, I mean, uh, actually, we got closer at uh, Daytona. So, top three cars within uh, point zero seven two. That was crazy. Oh, that well, that was that well, that was close. Uh, Daytona will uh, Daytona gonna Daytona, as they say. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> fantastic. Fantastic yeah. finish it was there, and then of course, uh, yeah, here, um, pretty much as close as it can can get. Uh, do you want to say thank you to any of the sponsors of the team or anyone like that uh, yeah, before we leave you for the evening? Yeah, I just want to say thanks to all the drivers. Uh, they do a great job uh, making this uh, so competitive. Um, I'd like to just uh, thank uh, TD uh, for sponsoring us as well as uh, Frank at Rick Tech. So uh, yeah. Kudos to them for, for making this possible. Um, and I'd also like to uh, uh, give a heads up to uh, Jeff and Kevin for putting this on. Uh, Kevin being an admin and being so fast on the track, that's just really amazing. It's a bummer admin on this. And uh, <clears throat> or, uh, you'll, uh, you'll get him back next time. Yeah, hopefully. All right, Mike, thanks for joining us once again, mate, and we will see you at the next race meet. Thank you, guys. Mike down there. Uh, again, gracious in defeat this time, and um, Adam Bath 
joins another man who um, was defeated out here today, but again can hold his head up high with a very good performance. Travis Schwenke is with uh, Mr. Bath. Oh, Travis Schwenke finishing second place in the in the Mazdas. In hindsight, probably not too bad, but uh, you did lead a good portion of that second half of the race. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, kind of interesting. I was uh, I cut it really close on fuel. I actually started sputtering out of the last corner, so I. Uh, I was trying to save some during that time, and then I had a couple chances. I thought maybe I could get a little bit of a break, and you know, I'd use a little more fuel there. I'm like, okay, I gotta be smooth here for a couple more laps again. So it was, it was kind of interesting playing that playing a game there. But I, I, I tr had to try for the break when I had the chance for sure. Yeah, you got a good, pretty good pit stop, 18.8 seconds. Had you done the calculations uh, right so that you just make it to the end, or, um, or yeah, what was your, what was your thinking behind that? I try to give myself a little, a little extra, um, but I actually just changed. Um, I use JRT, and I actually changed one of the, one of the, uh, the padding numbers because of uh, something that happened uh, on Saturday. So I was trying to figure out, okay, how much padding do I really need? And I guess I cut a little too close with this. So the second place, uh, not too bad, and happened at uh, at a Daytona, but in a second place, a good way to start the season. Yeah, yeah, that's what I figured. It, uh, I, I, I know we had a big lead on, uh, on third, so I figured if I, if I could push hard and, and, and try to race Rob in that last lap, that's what I was going to do. And uh, you know, I think we, we had it going pretty good, and I just kind of messed up as I, coming in there to that last corner and couldn't get the run off. I was hoping to be able to, to get a different, little different line that he used and get a good run, and hopefully uh, make it really close to the line. Next week, then a uh, second shield field in Canada, uh, going to be in. Interesting one for the Mazdas. We were speaking to Rob Hartley. He thinks the car handles well around there. Are you thinking the same thing? Uh, yeah, it handles really good around there. The uh, of course the the last chicane is the the trick with this car because you can you can take curves pretty well with it and uh, you got to hit it in the sweet spot though. Otherwise, it does throw you pretty good. But uh, I have to work at that and get getting that rhythm. Once you get in that rhythm, you can do it. You're you're pretty good. But uh, I have a hard time finding that rhythm sometimes with that last chicane. It's it's just really important to the lap times there. Well, before we let you go tonight, I want to say a quick shout out to anybody. Uh, yeah, so uh, TD, it was good to have him back tonight. I guess uh, he couldn't uh, get his mic shut off, but uh, we give him uh, give him some props for everything he does for the series. And even though he's having a tough year, he still sticks it out. And I uh, love having his spirit around the, the series. And, uh, of course, uh, uh, Rick Matek for, for sponsoring us and uh, giving us uh, great sim gear to use and a uh, great company to have around. Right, well, uh, well done on the runners up spot good start to the season and yeah hopefully we'll be chatting to you again next week at uh, montreal sounds great guys thanks all right um travis thank you then and uh great to have him in the commentary box as usual and um picked up a nice second place there to add to his collection um alex just a quick word from yourself just before we leave um Sebring throwing up a an excellent race again yep a uh, fantastic race um I think we've had our Daytona um, replay sport for us a little bit there, haven't we? Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because we were gonna, we, yeah. I don't think the drive. I don't think uh, Mike knew that we were gonna go back and revisit that and try and do a, a post race thing on there. But yeah, so uh, we'll have to act surprised, won't we, when it's a, when it's a super close finish? Well, but what, no, a, what a race what, that sounds like. Yeah, exactly. So I look forward to watching that one back. But we had a we had a cracker again tonight. So front two. In both classes, really going at it, showing their class. Um, yeah, awesome. Um, look forward to uh, to round three in a week's time. Indeed, and uh, Adam Seconds, your Villeneuve. We know we we all seem to enjoy that track, and uh, yeah, it's a good place for a race, isn't it? And the walls are close, and so will the other cars be as well. Yeah, and it's uh, not particularly the longest track that we've got. Probably one of the shorter ones. Uh, that we have on the schedule, so it's not going to be much room for manoeuvre for the uh, for the Mustangs or the Mazda MX-5s around this one. And uh, yeah, with the long straight and the uh, the tight chicane as well uh, to end the lap, uh, track space is going to be at a premium. So it should be one worth watching at uh, one thirty BST next week. Be a busy one for the stewards. Okay, everybody from all of us at Apex Racing TV and iRacing Lab. This has been a presentation of the Rick Matek Sports Car Series presented by. Extreme Motorsports. From Andrew Woodhouse from Adam Bath and from Alex Simpson, it's good night and we'll see you in, well, about 17 hours' time.